on. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Hi, everybody. This we've got. Um, well, this is the Global Party 2017. I don't think I've been telling anybody that, but I think you've all figured it out by now. This is Healing from the Inside Out. I have Nasuko Kemijo. Yes. Me? Yes. Originally with a name like that, maybe you already know, she is born in Japan. Yes, it is. She is living in Costa Rica now. Yes. And how that happened is part of how she's going to share about embracing the shadow, which is what she's been learning to do as she's been on the journey. So how did you, you left Japan and you went to the islands in the Caribbean? Yes. And so what happened the there? How did your life get all changed around? I was there doing volunteering mm -hmm. and I'm facing myself a lot of things. I explore a lot actually. When I come out from Japan to that island, mm -hmm. I met a lot of people from other countries, you know, mm -hmm. and that was great. And I thought I become like free freedom from the what I used to be. But actually, that shadow was still there. I constantly comparing myself with other people. Mm -hmm. So it was part of what happening in that island. And, and yes, and what happened was that after the that Saint Vincent, the country, yes, I supposed to go back to my country. That was my plan, right? But I met Emiliano, mm -hmm. and we really connected kind of very strongly in a more deeper sense, mm -hmm. questioning things or more honest connection. Right. You know, so, and he offered me, like, if you want to come to Costa Rica, you can come and my family will support you. And I was in a very, uh, wondering what should I do? Yeah. And Emiliano told me, I won't wait you. And I said to him, maybe I can go back to Japan and coming back. But he said, it won't happen. And I knew it won't happen. If I want to go back to my life I used to be, mm -hmm. I will be stuck there. This time I really wanted to try something different. And I came here. Well, let's, be, let's give the, the viewers a little background. So you were, um, when you say your life in Japan, so what was your life in Japan that you were supposed to go back to? It was very, I would say jail. <laughs> really jail. Okay. I always try to put myself into someone's demand mm -hmm. or someone accept, you know? So that was jail, like I created for myself. Mm -hmm, right. And what I used to do is I accommodate my jail. Mm -hmm. I put nice cushion. I always had a nice score in the school. Right. So still in a jail, still uncomfortable. I still have a nice bed. <laughs> I'm still in the jail of the job or something I don't like. Right. But I have a nice position. Yeah. Why have a money? I just accommodate my jail more comfortable but at some point i really couldn't um, um ignore the existence of the jail that this fall around myself right that was when i finished the university and you so you were what 21 22 20 to 22 22 so you yes. finished university and then you decided to you know, go explore and leave every the jail behind. Exactly. And then you discovered that although you were in a new country and you were loving the Caribbean and St. Vincent, your jail was still with you. Hence what we exactly. call Exactly. I thought jail was my country, <laughs> but it was not. No. That was jail I created mm -hmm. inside my head. Yeah. So it was exactly the same. That's why 
when I finished the program in St. Vincent, mm -hmm. I even tried to go back to jail. Right? Yeah. Yes. I never know how to to broke that jail. I knew how to um, how to uh, how to say this first. Um, temporary. Temporarily, yeah, like a visitor's pass. Get out of yeah. jail for the weekend. I'm vacation from the jail. <laughs> but now you need to go back. Yeah. You know, so that was kind of part of my story. So <laughs> when you discovered that it was your jail? It was um, the first question, don't ask me. Mm -hmm. I met Don in Costa Rica, right? And he asked me, what is your first memory? Mm -hmm. And I totally crushed. Like, I really remember very like sad memory mm -hmm. about uh, relationship with my parents. Mm -hmm. And that was the moment I realized something I really need to check myself inside. Yeah. And that was the most important question in my life that someone really asked me in an open way right what was your first memory and that was it and so that was when the doors of the jail started to open yes yes it is or maybe more i see the structure of the jail okay and it was i realized it could be a it could be uh it could be like how can i say it's undo deconstruct right yeah don't need to escape or anything but just deconstruct the jail just undo the jail yeah so now when you look out mm -hmm. what do you see i see it's i what it's shown to me as it is so what is that I would say maybe no fear, like no no shadow. See picture without like shadows. I see every part of myself really in daily life. That's amazing. All small emotion or small like moving inside myself. Mm -hmm. I see everything, or I see even outside what's going on now, as it is. So that's what I can say. I don't know if I explain myself good. But... Yes, no, you did. So let me ask you this. You have a beautiful smile. Okay. You're very joyful. So were you that joyful back home in Japan in your jail? No. You know what I felt about myself in Japan? Mm -hmm. No, I don't. <laughs> that was yeah, that was the deepest shadow I really needed to embrace. Mm -hmm. My judgment about myself was I am uh, disponible. Disponible? How you say that kind of thing that you can use for one time and you can just put it on the trash? Disposable. disposable. Yeah. Yeah. Dis disposable. Yeah. Disposable. That was how I think about myself. Okay. Disposable. Yeah. And how do you think about yourself now? It's beautiful. I really beautiful. I think now I really kind of like life more. I start to really have a joyful moment mm -hmm. in life. Or I realize that life is not really against me. Mm -hmm. It's always try to tell me how can I do my best. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, you are in the family house. Yes. Now, you're still joyful in the house that has limited things, mm -hmm. whereas you could have been in the jail with all the nice things? Without nice things? Oh, right. you mean, yes. I mean, this house, I really have a kind of minimum. Mm -hmm. to be sustained yes 
I have a nice bed. I have a nice sofa bed. I have a everyday nice food. It's just uh, that's what you mean, like without material things. Right. When I really want something like material things, that is always I believe in luck. Mm -hmm. When I believe I'm not pretty enough, I need some nice dress to cover it up. Right. To make it beautiful. <laughs> or I don't know, like it's everything like that, you know? So now I have really everything. So. Because it comes from inside. Yes, yes, that, that's the thing. It's not about outside. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, like I, the same thing. I mean, I'm like twice your age, okay? Um, <laughs> when I was your age, mm -hmm. I was busy in my career mm -hmm. and. Uh, there might have been a couple people that would have seen me without makeup, but generally the the face had to get made up. I had I was wearing you know designer suits, clothes, shopping all the time. The blah 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 blah. Uh -huh. And it was when my daughters first arrived that was when I realized they're both look entirely different. Mm. And I had to say, "Whoa, I how can I?" put makeup on or do anything, even though I had already scaled it back, but how could I do that or dye my hair or something? Because mm -hmm. what I'm really telling them that there's a certain way to look. Yes, yes. And that was where my introspection started to happen. And I said, no, they're beautiful, so I'm beautiful. But I had to see it in them before I could see it in me. And now that I say to people, it's like, yes, you know, I'm like the au natural. I still wear my earrings. Okay, I like my earrings. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it is something like, uh, I see a lot that people saying to themselves, I did the two. I am beautiful yeah. because I am wearing the makeup. Right. Well, I am beautiful because I'm still young, man, my body in shape. Yeah. Real beauty is not having that because. Right. If there is a because, it's always uh, get lost. Yes. If you lose. So insecurity is coming back to you. Yeah. Exactly. So. Because the shadow, right? And when you learn to embrace your shadow and see what you're really telling yourself, yes, then yes. you can let it go and uh -huh. dismantle it. Correct? Yes. 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 Yeah. And, you know, my, my youngest just had her prom. Oh, wow. So, yes, she, she, you know, she bought a lovely dress, but she just said to me today that her, like, best friend said to her, you you didn't wear any makeup to prom. And mm. she's like, N no. Like, and she's like, wow, are you ever confident? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, they are so into Yes, That's beautiful. Your um, daughter knows that in that age. Yeah, because it's that's how I said it comes from the inside out, right? And you have to be happy with yourself, because if you're not happy with who you are, because that that sense of joy and health and everything, that essence mm -hmm. comes. It's just it's just there. So that's that's the note, right? Yes. When yes, that's the that. note. Yeah, even the shadow is part of the note. That everyone, every single person, comes yes. with one note. And that note includes shadow. Yeah. Everyone has unique shadow. So don't don't separate that shadow from yourself. Yeah. And it well, just look at the sun. It mm -hmm. shines the shadow, right? You mm -hmm. see it. it. It's definitely there. Yeah. You can yeah. run as far as fast as you want. <laughs> yes, yes. But it's still coming with you. <laughs> yes, it's always. It's and so, better to become like friends with the shadow. Mm -hmm. Ooh, like you're there. What's going on? You know? So how would you um, suggest to viewers, besides the fact that they can come down to the coast, the home and do the journey, but if they were like, mm, you know, I don't know, what would be maybe three things you would suggest that they could do to start to embrace their shadow? Hmm. First, maybe just question 
to yourself? When you felt sad, mm -hmm. who, I am sad. Or to whom I am sad. Or what is situation that I am sad of? Mm -hmm. You know, just question to yourself. Be the best friends of yourself. And second, what, what, what was the question that, to, to start? Yeah. Um, to basically, what would you suggest that they start to do to, em to embrace okay. that, right? Okay. Also, touching the pain. Touching the it, Yes. Okay. Because it, usually that shadow is come with the pain. Why it becomes shadow is because there's so many, what we considered as a negative things happening. You don't want to see that's why right there. Right. So touching the pain, it might hurt. It might, you really need to see the, the memory you really don't want to see. Mm -hmm. But see it. You know, that's one of the things. Touching the pain. Go, go, go to the, the pain, the direction. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. And also the third, how to embrace the shadow. Maybe see how it is created mm -hmm. from your uh, perspective now. Right. Because usually shadow created when you were very kids. And when you're very baby, that they believe that everything is because of me. Right. I am the one. I am wrong. Mm -hmm. But maybe if you see that shadow from my age, I could see a little bit more white, you know, bigger. Right. Oh, yeah, that's true. My mother was kind of like frustrated, maybe. But my father was like, okay, so it was not about me. Right. And really embrace that child to really say honestly, that's okay. Mm. You're not wrong. Yeah. That's very good. So. Mm -hmm. Asking questions, right? Yes. And touching the pain. So essentially, when you came to Costa Rica, Dawn asked you a question and yes. it touched the pain. It totally touched the pain. I boost out, I cry a lot. Mm -hmm. But that was the most beautiful thing because that's the pain I, I depressed for 27 years. But that was my part of myself. Right. You know? So discover and that was one of the most message there a lot of message i really needed to for myself so you're 27 now yes yes so have you 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 left japan when you were finished school at 22 so were you in have you been in costa rica for four years uh, i was in almost two years in san vincent okay in caribbean island and here like almost two years and what do you like best besides the fact that you have freed yourself to be in joy? Mm -hmm. what, what do you, like when you wake up in the morning, what do you go, what, what do you feel like and what do you want to share with people what it feels like to wake up now? Oh, like I don't need to lie to myself anymore. Mm. I really don't need to lie to myself. That's really great. And and have your parents come to visit you or you yeah, got to see them? No, like they kind of, I am kind of like super black sheep. <laughs> in Japanese culture. Okay, please define the difference between a black sheep and a Super black sheep. <laughs> yeah, I'm stuck in stork. <laughs> no one <laughs> wants to. It's just, you know, it's so, so, I am out the door. I, I don't have money or I don't have a job for, it's totally uh, for them. So kind of maybe like this month, beginning of this month, I 
call it the connection with my family kind of mm -hmm. at some point they couldn't really understand i think more they fear me mm -hmm. and fear always works in the way that's very you know so my now i don't have a connection with my family but you have a connection probably with what feels like your real family. Yes, that, that's the thing. I really feel connection here. Yeah. And more than family, I always connected to myself. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like sense of luck. Right. Yeah. So just maybe share um, for some people that don't, no Japanese culture because as I was saying to you before I had an international student from Japan live with me so I had oh. some of that some of that experience as she stayed for a year and her and her father coming along and and I was just like hey <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so what is expected usually in Japan when you were if you had stayed there and you finished school what would what have your life been usually expected to be like uh, part of the society, it's a, everywhere. Everywhere is the same, right? But I, I, think I don't know if everywhere is the same, but quite. It's like uh, in, okay. I will tell you this word. It's very symbolical phrase. Everyone know in Japan, mm -hmm. which is when the the nail, you know, nail mm -hmm. with hammer. When the nail comes out from the how you say this? Like something? Yeah, the board. Yeah, board. It will be hit very hard. So when you're not in alignment, you get hit very hard. You exactly. get. Exactly. You're yes. supposed to be part of the overall culture. Yes, it's exactly a straight line on the board, yeah. as it's supposed to be. Yeah. See. It's very extreme, I think. Yes, that's why I say I wanted you to express that because, you know, people that grew up in the States wouldn't get that same, they might think their families are strict, right? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. And for us, more easier because we have very moral culture. 98% mm -hmm. of the population is Japanese. Right. And we are usually, it's very rare to find Oh, my mother is from other country. Or here, I I see somebody, you know. Yeah. My father is from Spain or Italy. Or I never seen those people. It's very monoculture. So that makes a more consensus reality. Mm -hmm. More firm, more convincible. Yes. More difficult to break the jail. Yeah. Yeah. It it's, I mean, since the Second World War, right, when you had to rebuild, it became a very tight community all around, business-wise, and everything was very yes. intertwined. Yes. It comes out as a, like, industrial thing, too, because Japanese people are very famous, I guess, yeah. for the quality car. It's always the same quality. Yeah. Always on time. Yeah. I question that. Is that good for them or, you know? Because we are like not the machine. Right. We are not created to do the same things again and again. It's always the universe is flow. Right. The Japan wanted to be totally against. Yeah, and, and I remember in my my corporate days I uh, that was one of the the, the model because I was with Kodak and, and so it was like, okay, so the Japanese their ideas make it smaller, make it faster, make it lighter, make it, um, I don't know, thinner. I think that was the four, <laughs> right? You know, yeah, so those are the four things that every Japanese business was just looking at. We could do that, but we'll make it smaller. Lighter. And, mm -hmm. and I remember shaking my head at that point because I knew how, how much bureaucracy Kodak had. And I was thinking, you're never going to survive. Yeah, <laughs> Just never ending story because they set the goal outside. Yeah. And totally denying ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, you know. So, yeah. So, you've totally broken free. You really have had a prison break. 
<laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, I like that drama. Yes. <laughs> so, how would you like to, um, like the youth? Because both you and Emiliano are are young in in one respect, but I'd say very wise or present to who you really are. And I, I do feel, as I said to Emiliano, that many of the youth already recognize within themselves that something it has to happen it's entirely different they do not want the lives of their parents right mm -hmm. they do not see the way the world works to it doesn't make sense mm -hmm. and so what would you what wisdom would you like to share with them about if they know you know just like you are they they think maybe they can get away they can go travel and life would be easier or mm -hmm. you know what would you like to say to them Just do it. That's like some Nike, but just really do it. <laughs> I really help. Like when I really finished the university, something really come to me, mm -hmm. and I just I didn't care. I just need to do this, and just if something comes up, like you know, because I often think if I choose this way, mm -hmm. it's going to be an end. But in life, there's n never end. There is always something there. Yes. So just believe what yeah. will be trust, what will be shown to you, mm -hmm. and just listen like in yourself. I know that people outside look so firm, look so convincible, but they actually don't know what they're doing. So mm. that's that's. A, uh, not judgmental way, but you know, they just following the pattern, mm -hmm. and the pattern doesn't mean it's real, right? So really listen what it came up for you, mm -hmm. and trust. Yeah, that's beautiful because, from my perspective, that's my one of my passions is that if I feel if I can help somebody learn to trust their inner guidance. I call it their like divine positioning system, like their global positioning system, but it's, you know, for them, divine. It always gets them in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. Then they're able to be unique and special and mm -hmm. their note, right? The yes. note that they um, play as only they can play. And the world becomes this beautiful symphony. Exactly. So all the opinions of the world, all what the media has to say, everything becomes irrelevant because this inner connection is so strong. You can hear this like playing in your soul, right? Yes. You can trust it and you believe it and you have confidence in it and it's mm -hmm. fun and joyous. Mm -hmm. Yes. And abundant. And Yes, yes, that, that's abundant because I don't know, like, people think about this, but in this moment, what I see, what I listen, what I say, or whatever my movement, only I can make it. And it comes to you without effort. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't need to, to think about what I'm going to see or it's just always there. Right. So just trust that uniqueness. That's your responsibility. Yes. If you left the position, that's the that's the start of suffering. Yeah. Yeah. Like really trust. Like it's really see the uniqueness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In this moment, what you see or what you listen is just only you can do in the world, in the universe, entire universe. Right. And so that's that's what I see, right? I see that everybody's opening up to themselves, right, in different ways. And even when others will go, well, ah, I go, no, I see. I see that, you know, they can wake up tomorrow and be entirely different. I believe that that's what's happening. It's, it's, it's like a dominoes, that game where, shh, you know, the vibrations there, it's occurring. And when you're open to seeing it, you... You see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I see it. Like I, I see it. it uh, all my life was about this. 
in even the small memory things, it's oh, okay, universe, that was it. It's uh, really pushing you to, you know, to really awake. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I I believe you. You look awake. You look mm -hmm. joyous. You look <laughs> radiant. You're beautiful. Okay. And I feel very blessed to have had this conversation. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was a very good opportunity, like for me to, to you give this platform to I can really connect. Yeah. Well, I I would I look forward to doing more of this. You know, and um, again, if people missed it, you are at the uh, Costa Rica initiative.com. Yes. Right? And there you can learn about the family home and the journey. And all are welcome because we're just embracing everyone and we're healing from the inside out. Yes. yes. One person at a time in a ripple effect exponentially <laughs> yes. all right well you have a really great night and thank you very much thank you thank you i love you i love you bye bye, bye.